r slash ask reddit. What's something insane that you witnessed with your own eyes but no one believes you because there's no proof? In middle school, walking home from a friend's house. I went to pet a doggy. Looked like a big golden lab, facing away from me. I got about three feet away and it turned toward me. Mountain Lion. In the front yard, right near the sidewalk, of a Chicago suburban house in an unremarkable neighborhood. I had nightmares for weeks. Finally, there was another sighting next town over, and it made the papers, and then all the stories came out about pets going missing, rabbit heads found in yards, and all the associated madness. My dad still thought I imagined it, I was a small kid, and it was a big lion. I saw a white wolf one day when I was walking the dog with my mom. She had dropped behind a ways and as I round a corner from the park there's this creature four feet tall at the shoulder and it's looking at me with an intelligence I'd never seen in a canine before. I had been told all my life that this area didn't have wolves so I thought it had to be some genetic freak of a giant white super husky or something. Finally it turns and walks away into the bushes and I go back to warn my mom. Fast forward a few months and I see this documentary on the return of sea wolves to coast of the Pacific Northwest and just about the southernmost range it's showing is right where I saw this wolf. Memory unlocked. My then fiancé and I saw a wolf in the Sierras in Northern California. Of course, it couldn't be a wolf, right? They don't wander that far south. It was gray and white stereotypical color and its shoulder must have been as high as my rib cage. Its head was as big around as my torso, I'm a big guy. It was very close to his, then it was gone. And we were in a very people busy area, so we thought surely it must be reported. Or if it wasn't, it must not be one. For reference, I grew up and spent my whole life in coyote territory, and have seen them in the wild every year since I was very young. This was not a coyote. In my city we lift our hand at the pedestrian crossings and the cars stop so we can cross. Most people respect it. One day getting off the bus I saw a dog stop and lift his paw at the crossing. I had topped to watch, believing it was a coincidence. Nope, the cars stopped for the dog and he only crossed when it was completely safe. And yes, the dog was alone, no human beside him lifting their hand or anything. Most people don't believe me to this day. That dog must have been a once in a generation genius, or he was taught by someone before living on the streets. I believe this. I've been in cities where stray dogs wait and cross the streets at the same time as the people. In Costa Rica, crosswalks play a sound, so blind people know when to cross. The stray dogs knew to wait for the sound. I had a gun pulled on me in an attempt to steal my car. I ducked and hit the gas and got out of there. No one believes me because I live in a small town in Canada where these things just don't happen. I was walking down the road to the store which I felt was a bad idea cause there were notifications of a guy police are looking for around my area for killing his GF and matched my description except I weigh 100 pounds more than him but anyways next thing I know four cop cars come screeching up block traffic pull their guns on me and scream freeze and for let me see your hands, I had about six cops all guns drawn on me, took about five minutes when they got my ID so I wasn't him but I told them to how would. He be 130 pounds this morning and become 240 pounds a hour later LMFAO, that shit was crazy. Had a taxi driver I'd get frequently who had a similar situation, he had that biker look, with a bushy beard and had a cop following him for a while, while he was driving his own car not on the job in a taxi. He's almost home, turns a corner and there's more cops on the road blocking the way, the one behind him flashes the lights so he pulled over, guns are drawn and orders him to step out and he gets handcuffed. Turns out some guy hijacked another car if the same make slash model and match a his description. Even after the cops confirmed he wasn't the guy, they patted him down before unhandcuffing, taxi driver had a small baggie of coke on him, supposedly the cop pretended like he didn't see it and just let him on his way. When I was in middle school at a sleepover, my friend and I were talking about our favorite foods. He said his favorite was meatball marinana and I said it's marinara. So we made a bet, 
it was raining outside, that if lightning struck the place where I pointed within a minute that I was right. He said that it was too long so we changed it to 10 seconds. As soon as I said one, it struck exactly in that place. We were so hyped we almost woke up the other people, but no one believed us. That reminds me of when a couple friends and I, maybe around age 10-ish, were having a sleepover at my house. A thunderstorm rolled in with rain and lightning. Our stupid asses decided it would be cool to go out in the rain in the driveway. At some point, we had joined hands in a circle and were spinning around and chanting or something, you know, like witches do. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning struck right between us. Crazy loud, crazy bright, and scared us all to death, so we ran inside screaming. None of us were harmed and there was no mark on the pavement the next day, so it wasn't believable. Before we go further please press the red subscribe button below if you're enjoying this so far. Driving yesterday, I was overtaken by a car going over 90 miles per hour. It was a Reliant Robin three-wheeler. This will mean something to Brits and absolutely nothing to the rest of the world. A Reliant Robin can go as fast as any other regular car, as long as it doesn't have to turn, at all. Makes me happy that there are still people brave enough to drive them, laughing face. There were quite a few roundabouts on the route. Pity I was too far behind doing only 70 or thereabouts, ahem, to see what happened. I suspect the engine was souped up as it sounded like a lumbo but that wooden hive made it stable. When I was about 8, I was riding in the car with my mom and sister. We were coming up on an intersection. There were trees on both sides of the road, so you could only see the cars driving by on the other road for a second. My mom and sister happened not to be looking ahead for a moment while I was, and I saw a long, rounded, silver vehicle with no roof and several people sitting in rows behind the driver passing by. I blurted out a, look, but by the time they did it was out of sight. The first description my dumb brain came up with was, like a shiny silver hot dog. They didn't believe me, and laughed about that for a long time to come. Several years later we were at a festival at my church, and I was walking around when I saw the shiny silver hot dog pull into the parking lot. I was kind of stunned, and went to find them. It turns out it was this thing. Which operates around Ohio. They were even more shocked. So I got to prove myself right after all those years, and take a fun ride. This happened to my mom and I, but nobody believes our story. I was at the kitchen table studying when I was 16, my mom was cooking dinner. A fly was buzzing around and she swatted at it with a dish cloth, the same dish cloth that was on her shoulder being used as a hand wiping rag while cooking. While waving the cloth around, she let go of it, it flew somewhere behind her, and then it, was just gone. I mean gone gone. We both overturned that entire kitchen and even pulled out furniture, like the fridge, looking for it until we started to feel crazy. Was there ever a rag? Was she just using her hand and not a rag to swat at the fly and we were mistaken? It was so bizarre. Years later when the house was completely empty because we were moving out, we both went back in there and did one final look. No rag. So I guess in some alternate dimension, some gnome was sitting around and a portal opened to dump a wet cooking rag on it because what other explanation is there? Edit, wow. I didn't expect this comment to get so much attention plus comments about similar stories. I mean, surely some of our stories have logical explanations, even if we ourselves don't know what they are, but what if there is some kind of real phenomenon that does this in other cases? I saw the dish cloth leave her hand and fly behind her. It looked like it went in a downward direction toward the floor, except it wasn't on the floor. Like, what the hell? I still feel weird even talking about it and it's almost 25 years later. Reading this reminded me of something that happened when I was about 15 or 16. I'm going to preface this by saying that I could have been the victim of a prank. But if so, this is slash was the only prank ever known to be played in my very straight laced, as in, we don't even pretend Santa is real because we don't lie, family. I had a favorite pair of jeans and one day I just couldn't find it. Looked everywhere. 
checked other family members' laundry etc. No jeans. Nothing particularly unusual so far. Clothing goes missing. Maybe it was mixed up with someone else's clothes. Maybe it was stolen off the clothesline. Whatever. Except. One day I come home, walk into my room and the jeans are neatly draped across my bed. I thank my mom for finding it, she's the only one home. She knows nothing about it. Subsequently each member of my family denies any knowledge of finding the jeans or how they got onto my bed. I had slash have no reason to think anyone was lying or having fun at my expense. Decades later, this is still a complete mystery. You just reminded me of the mystery of my missing measuring cup. About a year after moving into my apartment that I live in by myself, my vintage Pyrex measuring cup disappeared. I tore my kitchen apart looking for it, had my friend come over and look for it, and my mother looked around one day when she was visiting. It was nowhere to be found. I decided I must have accidentally thrown it away, even though it would have been extremely out of character for me to have done that. But it was literally gone. Cut to a few months later, I'm making dinner after work, open the cupboard, and my measuring cup is sitting there, front and center. I have never been that freaked out in my entire life. It was not there the previous day. No one has keys or access to my place except the landlord. I considered putting in a camera after that happened, because it terrified me so much. When I was about six I was running down the stairs at school, first to leave the classroom at the end of the day. I pulled a 50p coin from my pocket, but dropped it. It bounced down the stairs, and when it hit the floor at the bottom, landed perfectly upright on its side. For non-English people, 50 PS are a huge, thin, seven-sided coin, and this is just so impossibly unlikely to happen. I stood and stared in disbelief, and tried to tell everyone that rushed past but no one seemed to believe me slash care. Eventually, I picked it up and went home with no one to share the moment with. One of the most exciting moments of my life. Edit. Wow I can't believe how validating sharing this and getting a positive response has been thank you all for believing me. Not to send this off on a tangent but when I was 8 years old, living in rural Illinois, I witnessed a UFO slash UAP hovering over a cornfield about 300 yards away from me as I was headed home for dinner. Sun was just beginning to go down. I can't say how long I watched it for before it shot straight up and disappeared but I caught hell for being late for dinner. When I tried to explain what I'd seen, I was ridiculed and sent to my room without dinner for lying. Never said much about it to anyone until recently. In my old job in a restaurant, there was a flat above, we used to use the electric oven there for extra oven space, when we had a lot going on. It was said the building was haunted, it was a huge four-story massive place. I was struggling with something out the oven had my hands full, knocked the light off with my elbow and the door that leads out of the flat was open the whole time, I knocked the hall light off with my elbows, then went out and about to put the tray down so I could close the door. As I was putting it down the door closed, not slammed but just closed. I was worried shitless, I just said thanks like an idiot. I don't believe in ghosts but that day was strange. When I was a kid I had a favorite stuffed frog. I slept with it every night. My cousin liked it too so his mom got him one. One day after he had stayed the night, I noticed I had two stuffed frogs, and assumed my cousin left his stuffed frog at my house. When I brought it back to him he showed me that he still had his frog. My frog had a crack down the center of his left eye. Upon inspection of the mysterious third frog, it had the exact same crack down its left eye. When I compared my frog and my cousins they had minor differences. Tag in a slightly different spot, some seams were sewn a bit off, and the casting lines on the eyes were different. My frog and the mystery third frog were exactly the same though. I could only assume it was somehow duplicated. The stuffed frog was not the only time this happened either. I ended up with two right shoes and a left shoe from the same pair of shoes. We had an old promotional glass from the Batman movie. I found it behind the couch one day and went to put it back where it goes but it was already there. 
My mom lost a pair of earrings. They had been missing for almost 10 years when two of us found a pair of earrings on the same day. Now she has two sets. What weirds me out the most is that nobody in my family seems to notice or care, even when I bring it up. The most I can get out of them is, yeah that's kind of weird I guys. Thanks for watching, please press the like button if you enjoyed and the notification bell next to the subscribe button to never miss another video. Let me know your thoughts below, bye.